Hey, what's up everybody? Happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing good. We're going to be talking in this video today about motivation for weight loss. I wanted to make this because I've actually had a couple of conversations with clients today about this similar topic. So I thought, hey, well, uh, I'll share the same information with everybody on Facebook that I, that I do with my clients. I'm happy to do that because sometimes it's really easy to lose motivation when you are trying to lose weight. And that can happen during the weight loss process or when you've lost weight already and you want to keep it off, right? Sometimes we, I don't know, stuff happens, life happens, birthdays happen, weekends, holidays, trips, um, just life. We get busy. We get a new job. We, we get busy at our jobs, right? And we lose the motivation. Um, so I wanted to talk about a concept, a couple of principles that I promise if you'll stay with me and you'll learn these principles and you'll apply them in your life, you will never feel uncomfortable in your skin again. You'll never have to gain the weight back. Uh, you'll be able to lose all of the weight that you want and you'll be able to keep it off. So I'm gonna teach you and talk about a couple of principles that we have to understand first and go through it. So stick with me. I'm gonna turn this to the whiteboard a little more so you can see it. There's the edge of the whiteboard. All right, so let's break this down. All right, so first thing we have to understand is what I call the circles of freedom. Stick with me, I promise you're gonna, this will change your life in business, in marriages, in relationships, in parenting, whatever it is. So stick with me, all right? So circles of freedom operate like this. They say that the principle that it operates under is that rules allow for freedom. If you follow rules, you will be free. Let me explain how this works. As a child, if you have children, you probably know this. Like when you're a kid, your parents say, hey, you can go outside and play but just stay in the yard. If you leave the yard, you're gonna to have to come inside the house. So you leave the yard and what happens? You gotta come inside. You break the rules so you lose some freedom. You become a teenager and your parents say, hey, you can have a car and you get your license or maybe here's a cell phone or hey, you can stay out till midnight or whatever time your curfew is. But if you break the rules, meaning you come in late, you speed, you get a ticket, you drive outside the city, whatever it is, you get bad grades, whatever your rules are for your children, they lose freedom. So here's how it works. You start with a little bit of freedom, and the more that you abide by this rule inside here, you know, that circle there, you gain more freedom, okay? And the more, f and this, these circles can expand, and they can shrink based on your adherence and, and abiding by the principles that they operate under, okay? So you can drive anywhere you want in the United States, and you can travel internationally as, as long as you follow the rules. What are the rules for travel? Well, you gotta have a license, you gotta abide by the rules of the road, you gotta have a passport, whatever it is, right? You break those rules, what you can, and you can go anywhere, right? So you can travel in the United States, you can go outside, you can, you can drive anywhere you want in the world, but you start getting multiple tickets, what happens? your freedoms are restricted. I've talked about this before, right? So your freedoms come back in, you lose freedom. So where does this come in and play with weight loss? Well, freedom with weight loss and freedom with your health means not having to feel uncomfortable in your skin. It means not having to worry about the weight coming back on, not having low energy or joint pain, not having to stress about getting chronic disease or dealing with your family history of diabetes. Uh, it means you know, not having to feel, feel out of breath when you walk up the stairs. Uh, to be able to go anywhere and shop and buy the clothes you want because you don't have to worry that they're going to fit because they're going to fit, right? Um, it, about looking good when you take your, your shirt off or you go to the, the beach, right? Uh, you know, depending on if you're male or female, probably. But you, you get what I mean. Freedom allows you with your health in order to enjoy those things. If you break the rules of health and how our body works, you will always, always struggle with your weight, Okay. So, of course, that goes into a whole nother lesson on what are the rules of health. And I've done lots of lives on that. That's what I teach people in the program. But anyway, this principle, though, is if you abide by the rules, you will never have to struggle with your weight. So let me share a rule with my own rule, my own struggles here. I, I have a total sweet tooth. I love, love, love treats and snacks. I love to eat chips and crackers and go out to eat and enjoy good food. Last night, if you missed it, I, I showed you how I made some uh, pork stuffed acorn squash. Just, I love food, right? And so I've always been a little bit thicker. I've always been a little bit overweight. I, I was 50 pounds overweight at my highest point and I've lost it and kept it off. However, I still eat 
treats and snacks. I go out to eat. It's Friday night. You bet you. I say this all the time. Weekends is when I make treats. We are making treats. We're making delicious food. Um, we go out to eat. In fact, the other day we went and got burgers and fries. And the, the key is, is you're going, how in the world does this apply to that? Well, I abide by the rules or the boundaries that I set in order to keep the weight off, okay? So I'm not talking about calories, by the way. I don't count calories. I don't count macros. I don't go to the gym to burn more because I ate something I shouldn't have. I could keep my weight regardless, and what I teach my clients, you can keep your weight regardless of if you go to the gym or not. How powerful is that? Talk about freedom. I am not a slave to exercise. I exercise because I enjoy it, and I exercise because I know it's a law, it's a rule of health. In order to be healthy, I have to do it. Notice I didn't say to keep my weight, right? You don't have to exercise to keep your weight. You have to exercise to be healthy in other ways, but not to keep your weight, okay? So this circle of freedom says this. If you abide by the rule, you'll be able to have all the benefits you want. You can go anywhere you want inside here. So here's some rules, and I'm, I'm getting into how you can, I'm gonna have another principle I'm gonna teach you, so stick with me. Some of the rule, one, well, let me just say this. The only rule I follow, and this is what I teach in my program, is to eat nutrient-dense foods, okay? Now, you're not going to know what that means, probably, unless you know what nutrient-dense foods are, but there's a whole list of them. I've done, like, multiple lives on it, and uh, if you want, I can go tag you in that live. Just say, tag me in the nutrient-dense video. Um, I'll go tag you in the live. So, um, but basically, it's proteins, veggies, fruits, nuts and seeds, uh, herbs and spices, all sorts of delicious, you know, eggs, avocado, all that stuff, right? I only eat those foods. I don't eat anything that's outside of that. So that's a rule. Well, then how, then you say, how in the world, Jared, do you keep your weight off? How do you go and have cookies and brownies and ice cream and pumpkin pie and all these things? The holidays are coming up. I'm getting pumped. We just had a delicious, like, butternut squash sausage soup. It was really good. Um, how do you do it? Well, I abide by the rules. I only eat nutrient-dense foods. So all you got to say is, okay, how do you do that? Well, that's what I teach people in the program. This, this is a whole like long list, but basically it's like you can have whatever you want, pizza, brownies, ice cream. You just have to make sure the ingredients are nutrient-dense. That's really how you do it. So, but this, is the, this leads into the second principle of why you can't keep the weight off, why you're struggling. Why um, you, you know, no matter how hard you try, you always give in, okay? Uh, now, I know that's a problem when you're like, yeah, I love to feel good and lose weight, but I also love chocolate, right? Or I love donuts. I love pizza. I love soda, right? And you have these two conflicting things. And so the key is, and let me write down this other principle. The key is, is that you will never, and I say this with all confidence in the world, you will never keep the weight off until you have a strong enough why to do so. You will never lose the weight until you have a strong enough why to do so, okay? And you might say, no, I'm totally motivated. Well, <laughs> you might say, I'm totally motivated and I, I can't keep the weight off. Well, there's some, if you were truly like had your, your why, you'd figure out a way to keep the weight off. You would do it. Now, you, that, that means working with the right people, joining the right programs, getting the right mentors, doing the right things, eating the right foods, not eating the right foods, right? So you, if you knew, or if you really had a strong enough why, you would keep the weight off, okay? So sometimes we don't feel super motivated though, right? So here's how you stay motivated. Here's how you do it. Um, there's these things that we call goals. And there's things that we call standards, okay? Stay with me. You're gonna, this is gonna change your life. If I were to ask you, anybody watching this, Nick, Kirsten, uh, Jeannie, Sarah, Adam, Andy, how's it going, guys? If I were to ask you guys, do you brush your teeth? Uh, comment, go ahead. Um, I bet you're going to say, yes, I brush my teeth. Give me a yes if you brush your teeth, if you're watching this. Um, okay, so if you go on vacation, do you still brush your teeth? Give me a like if you brush your teeth when you're on vacation. I bet you do. What happens if you, tell me what happens, uh, go ahead and comment. Tell me what happens if you forget your toothbrush. I bet you go buy one. Tell me what you do. Do you do, for just skip a night, you go buy one, 
Do you have extras you packed? You know, maybe your spouse did. I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff people do. I bet even, and give me a big thumbs up or something, if you do this, if you have multiple tubes of toothpaste in your house right now in case you run out, okay, you're probably chuckling because that's you. You do have that. So it sounds like in your life, brushing your teeth is really important to you. You could even say it's a standard. Much like if I were to say, hey, so-and-so, hey, Nick, or hey, uh, Sarah, or anybody, you know, whoever I'm, I'm talking to, whoever's watching this, if I were to say, hey, let's go, I don't know, steal some stuff, or let's go lie to our spouses, or let's go, I don't know, do recreational drugs, or let's go, I don't know, break into somebody's house. You'd chuckle at me, you'd laugh at me, you'd probably laugh at me and walk away and be like, no thanks, like I'm not gonna do that. Why? Because you have standards. You don't do those things. If, you know, if you choose not to drink alcohol and I say, go drink some alcohol, you'd say no. Why? Because you have a standard. Well, you also have goals. Your goals around brushing your teeth, if I were to say, why do you brush your teeth? Go ahead and comment. Tell me why you brush your teeth. I'd love to hear the reasons why. I bet it's probably because you want clean teeth. You feel cleaner when you do it. You don't want a gross smile. You don't want to get cavities. You don't want bad breath, right? All these really cool things. So you have goals. So what do you do? In order to achieve your goal as a human being, we don't often work very hard to achieve these things, so in order to do it, you have to make it a standard. You don't even question anymore. No matter how tired you are, no matter if you're on vacation, you don't wanna go get another toothbrush. That's like the last thing you wanna do on vacation, but you do it anyway, right? Why? Because it's a standard to help you reach a goal. Okay, so when it comes to weight loss and having your why, remember, the only reason why you don't keep the weight off and haven't lost it is because your why isn't strong enough. Okay, so how do you make a why strong enough? Well, here's the goal. We call it permanent weight loss. Permanent weight loss. Okay, so what do you have to do to make it a standard? Well, there's all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to list them all out here, but you got to drink lots of water you know, and not eat crappy food and eat nutrient dense food. So back to my example, not crappy, not crappy food. Back to my example, I only eat nutrient dense foods. Does that sound like a goal or a standard? That's a standard. Why? Because my goals, and I'll be personal here, my goals are, and this is what exactly what I told my clients. When I'm 70 years old, I'm in my mid thirties right now. When I'm 70 years old, I want to be able to run up Mount Timpanogos, which is right outside my window right here. I want to be able to run up that. I want to be able to jog up it. I want to be able to hike it with my grandkids and outperform them. I want to be able to take my shirt off when I'm 70 and 80 years old. And I want my grandkids to go, man, grandpa is ripped. Like he looks good. I want to be like grandpa. When my daughter, who's turning one next month, when she brings a guy home, to think about marrying him. I want there to be such a high standard for the type of person that I am, including my health goals, that she has to, like, it, it, it's in her mind, the only person she wants to her husband to be like is her dad, right? So yes, I wanna be a better father, I wanna be a better husband, but I wanna be physically fit as well because I want my kids to look at me and go, man, dad's ripped, right? Now you might chuckle and be like, you can't look ripped when you're 80. I know 80 year olds who look very muscular. I know them. They're still rocking and rolling. I want to outperform my grandkids on mountain bike when I'm 70 and 80. Yeah, that sounds nuts. It sounds insane, but I know people who do it. I know people who slalom ski until November when they are 80 years old. I'm talking on like in Utah on a lake until November. It's freezing cold, just so you guys know that. Every morning, 6 a.m., they snowmobile. I had a guy in my life who was in his 80s and he died snowmobiling. Like that's how powerful to me this is, right? It is that personal to me. That that's my goal. I have to create a standard now. When I'm in my mid-30s, I have to have a standard that's gonna help me reach my goal. So the standard is I only, I only eat nutrient-dense foods. If you were to say, Jared, here is a donut. I love donuts, just by the way. Uh, Chantel, how's it going? Sarah, that's a great goal. This is good info, thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Sarah, glad to, glad to share. Um, okay, so if you were to say, Jared, here's a donut. I love donuts. Dunford especially. I don't know if they have those everywhere. I know in Idaho and Utah they do. It's a chocolate cake donut with chocolate glaze on it, right? So good. Love them. If you were to say, Jared, here's a Dunford donut. You want it? I'd say no. No way. 
If you say, here's $1,000, no. Here's $5,000, I would not eat that donut. 10,000, no. If you pay me like 100,000, maybe I would. Uh, I might compromise my standard for one day, but I might not, and here's the why. is because it's a standard. It'd be like the same thing saying, Jared, do you wanna go do some illegal drugs? Jared, do you wanna go steal from the grocery store? I'll pay you $100,000 if you go steal from a grocery store. Like, would you do it? Ask yourself, would you? I don't think I would. In fact, I wouldn't, why? Because I have a standard. My standards are not worth any amount of money to me because it's who I am, right? And so when you ask me and you're like, when you tell me like as a person, oh, I just, I, I want to lose weight, but like that bread, those rolls are so good. You don't have any standards in your life. You don't, are not practicing enough self-love in your life. You do not have a strong enough why to say no. That's what you're telling me. And that may sound harsh, but that's my, that's my job, is to motivate you and help you realize there's more to life than just the mundane of struggling with weight and pain and feeling uncomfortable and tugging at your clothes because they're too tight and you're having to go up a size now and buy clothes, like that's no fun, right? Like I don't want you to have to feel uncomfortable and you don't want to go out with your friends or avoid people you haven't seen in a few months or years. Like that's not a way to live, right? So when you tell me I want that chocolate or I want those Oreos and I just couldn't resist, my kids, you know, they said, mom, do you want some? Why are your kids even eating those? Do you, do you love your kids? Stop feeding them junk food, right? Like that's what it comes down to. Your why is not strong enough. And that may sound harsh, but that is the reality, okay? If you have a goal, if you want your kids to be healthy people and not struggle with their weight, what's your standard? Do you give them Lucky Charms? Do you give them Ritz crackers? Which by the way, both are banned in the United States. Do you, you know, all these crazy things, right? Do you have standards in your life? And if you do not, if you are struggling with your weight, I guarantee you it's because you don't have standards. Now, you're probably going to like get offended. I don't know if you are, but I hope you don't. You might be thinking in your mind, well, I have total standards. Well, okay. Are you at your ideal weight and have you kept it there? That's your goal. But have you kept it there? If you haven't, you, you don't have a strong enough why. And here, so here's your why. Why fits right here, okay? That's where your why goes. Your goals and why you want to achieve those goals will help you make standards. So here's the kicker, or not the kicker, but here's the key. I'm going to teach you how to get a stronger why. Why is that important? Why is this so important? Because this is the key. Like, you, There's no way you can lose weight or get healthy or anything. If you have a business goal, if you have a health goal, if you have a relationship goal, you can't say my goal is to not get divorced. And then like do whatever you want to do, right? Like you can't say I want to have a happy marriage and then like sit on your phone while your family's eating dinner. Like you know that eventually that's going to like cause problems, right? So, so you have to change this. Like we all do. And, and I'll tell you, I've had to re-up on my standards and goals the last couple of weeks. I found that I wasn't wasn't eating as many nutrient-dense foods as I should have, and I was eating more snacks and treats. Now, again, they're nutrient-dense. I still follow that rule. I do not step outside that rule, because if I do, I gain the weight back. As long as I don't step outside that rule, I don't, I don't gain the weight, and I can teach you how to do that if you're interested, but the key is, is that I had to re-up too. We have to come back to our why. So do you know what I did this morning at 5.30 a.m.? I wrote a list of 50 reasons, 50 reasons, of why I wanted to do this, okay? My goals, my, my goals now are gonna become my standards again, right? So we have to do this periodically. So here's how, you, here's how you make goals become standards. I'm gonna teach you my trick. It's all about what you do on a daily basis. You cannot go and expect to be healthy and eat one salad. You cannot go to the gym and want to get ripped and only go one time, right? It just doesn't work. So you have to do it consistently. And the no, the diff, there's no difference in your standards as your muscles on your body. You have to have standards and review them often, okay? So we're talking about motivation, why you feel unmotivated to lose weight. It's because you don't have a strong enough why, because you don't feel it often enough, okay? So the first thing I want you to do, and this is an assignment. You can do it right now after this video or sometime this weekend. You'll have some time to think, I'm sure. So what I want you to do is I want you to do what's called belief stacking. Okay? We all have these beliefs. Where do beliefs come from? Our thoughts. 
Whatever you think you're going to believe. So if you think you're overweight, you're going to be overweight. If you think that you're doomed to be overweight, you're always going to be overweight. If you think that you're forgetful, you're going to be forgetful. If you think that you're the worst mom in the world, you're going to become the worst mom in the world. Whatever you think, you become. Okay? So here's how you belief stack. Write out 50, 5 zero, reasons why you want to do it. Do it. Go write them. Just get a journal out. Get a notebook. Get a Word document. It doesn't matter. 50 reasons why you want to get healthy. 50 reasons why you want to take control of your health. Okay? Or your business. Or your whatever. Right? 50 reasons why. And then... Review them daily. Boom. That's the key. So it's cool to do this one time. That's awesome. Great. I'm glad you did it. You probably were super motivated that day. But imagine if you reviewed those or rewrote them, in fact, every single day. So one of my standards, just so you guys know, personally, is I do mindset work every morning. I wake up at 5 o'clock. I have a little buffer there in case I sleep in a little. 5 to 5.30 every morning. At 5.30... I do a little breathing, a little meditation for about five minutes. I do a little bit of thinking and and pondering, uh, praying, and then I go into my mindset work. And I do that for 10 to 15 minutes. I have an entire vision board. I've got a whole manifesto about myself. I I wrote it in third person because that makes me feel cool. Jared is this. Jared will achieve this. He has done this. He lives this. He lives in this kind of house. He has this kind of car. He, his body looks like this. And then I have a vision board that portrays that, right? And then I have personal standards. It's not about the goal only. It's about the actions that are going to help you get there. You do the actions because they're the right thing to do, not because you want to get the result. You've got to shift that dieting mentality. Dieting mentality says, I'm not losing weight. It's therefore not working. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. That's a really, really bad mentality. That will always make you struggle with weight gain. You change that and you say, I'm going to do the behaviors anyway, regardless of what the scale says. Okay? So you do the right things because it's the right thing. So I review my 50 reasons and I have a whole, I've got a whole list of things and and affirmations. I got like three pages of affirmations of things that I find, hey, I might struggle with this. Let me write an affirmation and review it daily. Why? Because I need to flex that emotional muscle every day. I need to strengthen it every day so that I can belief stack. What does this do? What's the purpose of belief stacking again? To give you your why. Why? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to lose weight? Right? So that is the most important thing you can do is have your why. And then here's another thing. Once you have your why, I'm giving you all the tricks today. I'm just unloading. So... Let me know if you like this. Give me a thumbs up, like it, share it, whatever, because this is like gold that I only teach people who pay me to teach them this, okay? So once you have your why, oops, hopefully you can see that. Okay, once you have your why, what you need to do then to create standards is you need to identify the weak areas. Weak areas. So if you know that three o'clock in the afternoon is a really hard time for you, or you know that Friday nights or parties with your family or eight o'clock after dinner or whenever it is for you, if there's a handful of, if there's a a thing of M&M sitting in front of your desk, if that's your weak area, then create a standard around it. If you were a general in an army and you needed to fortify your army and you had a city to protect, well, you'd go fortify the weakest area, right? Like you wouldn't leave it open. If you, if you knew you were going to battle and you had armor and everything else was protected except for right here on your chest, wouldn't you protect that? Absolutely. So you have to identify what they are and then fortify them. What I mean by fortify is create a standard, create a rule, right? Take your 50 reasons and create some affirmations. If it's a mental thing, right? Create some boundaries. Create a safe environment. And then also create a rule, create a standard, right? That's the key. So for instance, I have treats and my treats again are only nutrient dense, but I have them. I love them. They're super good. We've got chocolate down in our our thing. We got chocolate chips. We're going to make something tonight, right? 
What is a rule that I've created and a boundary for myself? I only eat treats on the weekends. Why? Because I know I personally struggle with it. Even though my treats are really very beneficial for your body and you wouldn't know the difference between my cookies and someone else's cookies. They taste not identical, of course, because it's a different recipe, but they taste amazing, right? That's the point is they're not like, I'm not talking like black bean brownie cookies. Like that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like legit, really delicious cookies with real chocolate chips. They are sweet, they're delicious, they, uh, they, they're moist, they fall apart in your mouth. They're just, they're amazing, right? So I know though that I could get in the habit of eating a treat every day. And is that gonna help me achieve my goals? No. So what I've done is I've created a boundary or a standard that I only eat treats on weekends, right? Or very special occasions like holidays, birthdays, or a date night with my wife. In fact, we went, on, we went and got burgers and fries the other day as a date, just for a fun thing and a little cafe for lunch, and we got some chocolate after. That was two days ago, right? So that was a rule that I set. I'm okay following those rules, because I can have them. I can enjoy them, right? So those are some things that I've personally done, but that's how you do it. You have to have your why. So go back and watch this video again to talk about what we've gone through, because this is a lot. You have to have your why, in order to create a standard, and may even have a standard and a goal, but then you take your why and you identify the weak areas and you fortify yourself. That's the key. That's why, you, you know, we talk about all these different things about calories and inflammation and all this stuff we talk about, and there's some legit stuff, but this is the real why. This is why you haven't lost the weight and kept it off. If you're struggling to lose the weight, it's because you don't have a strong enough why or you haven't created standards yet based on your why. If you're struggling to keep it off and you keep yo-yoing, you find your weight's creeping up, right? It's these things. Now, you may be saying, I'm working at it, I'm working at it. Well, then what you're doing isn't working. Change it. Figure out what's not working because you have a strong enough why, right? People in my program have done multiple, like two, three, four, five, ten, time, ten sometimes, different approaches to weight loss before they come to my program. They're trying to figure it out. They have a why, and they don't want to, they don't want to compromise their why. So they create a standard that they're gonna figure it out. And they've, they've thought, should I just give up? Shouldn't I just give up? I'll, I'll just be this way. I'll just stay this way. Well, that's not an option to them. So they find out what's not working, the weak areas, and they fix it. They improve, they work with somebody, they join a program, they do a different approach, they, I don't know, whatever it is for you. Now there's some specifics around that, why certain approaches work and don't work, and that's for another time, a different day, but. I hope this makes sense. Hopefully this helps. It got longer than I wanted. I think I'm late for a call with my client. If you're watching this, I apologize. Um, I don't know if you're on here. Anyway, so uh, hopefully this helps. You guys have a great Friday. Um, and think about this this weekend. What's your why? What are your standards? What are your weak areas? What goals do you have? And are your goals standards yet? Because if they're not, no matter how strong your why is, if you don't have standards, it's still not strong enough, right? You still have to create the standards to reach your why. So anyway, hopefully this helps. Let me know, share it, like it. You know, it's a great, great information. It's changed my life. Hopefully it'll do the same for you. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Enjoy your weekend.